Hi all. In light of recent events, I wanted to offer a quick look into one of my favorite novels, Jean Toomer's Kane, and the ways in which African-American artists have worked across genre and medium throughout history to illustrate the severity of lynching without perpetuating imagery of black death. A very important figure in African-American literature, or just American literature, period, Jean Toomer was born in D.C. and was the grandson of Pinckney Benton Stewart Pinchback, the first African-American governor in the United States. Pinchback had been a Union soldier during the Civil War and later served as the acting governor of Louisiana during the Reconstruction era. A poet, playwright, and novelist, Toomer's most famous work, Cain, was published in 1923 and was held by critics for his literary experimentation and portrayal of African-American culture. From a very early age, Toomer resisted being classified by race, preferring to call himself simply American. Descending from a black mother who looked white and a white father who left them before he was two, Toomer knew all too well the harsh realities of living betwixt and between the arbitrariness of race in the United States. In 1922, Toomer moved to Sparta, Georgia to become a school principal, and it was from this trip to the South that he experienced firsthand the realities of both Southern Black culture and Southern white supremacy. And he began to write heavily about African American experiences. And here I deliberately say Black culture and white supremacy and not race. Why? Because general understandings and definitions of terms like race or diversity or even racism really sanitize the truth. Not saying that the terms themselves aren't useful, but what Toomer and other artists that I'll discuss in a minute were doing was very deliberately using their artistic acumen as writers and painters and photographers to really illuminate the richness and the depths of black cultures. Something a term like race cannot do on its own. Very much so, like the term racism on its own, absolutely does not elucidate the very real and lethal nature of white supremacy and white supremacist violence against black communities. Thus, Toomer offered Cain to American readers as a work that was both an ode to black communities in the northern and southern states, while simultaneously presenting a more detailed look at specifically how Black cultural practices allow Black people to survive and navigate the realities of white supremacy. Like most Black artists creating during the Harlem Renaissance, Toomer worked diligently in the first section of Cain, because the book is broken up into three sections, to express the innate beauty of the Black South. The unit is comprised of poems, short stories, and prose that celebrate the Black woman and the majesty of nature. But he also used his lyricism to critique the heinous realities of white supremacy, particularly lynching. For instance, in his poem, Portrait of Georgia, he does something so remarkable in that he lyrically paints the scene of a lynching in the image of a young white woman. Now this was critical for a literary text because up to the 1920s, which is when the NAACP really began its legal and political pursuits for federal anti-lynching legislation, there was one powerful voice leading the charge against the country's lynch mobs, telling the truth about how and why lynching was actually occurring throughout the U.S. and that the reason given for lynching, the so-called protection of white women from rape by black men, was absolutely false. And this woman's name was Ida B. Wells. They called her a sword among lions because she used her skills as a journalist to reveal that lynch mobs were actually openly murdering innocent black community leaders, businessmen and women, adolescents and teenagers, as well as working class African-Americans who were often just standing in their own political and economic autonomy as U.S. citizens. And Wells went even further by publishing the names of countless white Americans who both carried out and partook in various lynchings. Wells was recently awarded the Pulitzer Prize for her writings on lynchings in America. Now, as an artist, Toomer was not alone in lyrically illustrating what was happening to Black Americans. Here's a work from Jacob Lawrence's Migration series, which he painted between 1940 and 41, entitled After a Lynching, the Migration Quickened. 
Lawrence, who was born in Atlantic City, New Jersey in 1917, was the son of Southern migrants himself, who eventually moved to Harlem in 1930. During his adolescence, he participated in community art workshops and trained with Harlem's artistic vanguard, painters such as Charles Austin, Henry Banner, and sculptor Augustus Savage, who were all Toomer's contemporaries. Again in 1940, Lawrence received a grant from the Rosenrod Foundation to create his epic 60-panel migration series. So notice in this painting how Lawrence uses line, brushstroke, and shape to flatten the painting's plane as a way to communicate the heaviness and the weight of lynching on Black communities, and more specifically, on Black bodies. A weight that we are all feeling quite viscerally right now. But I want you to notice the bowl at the edge of the table as it denotes movement, as if it's about to fall on the floor. Here, Lawrence is suggesting the tipping point, the moment when we would take to our feet and move, and move we did. In great numbers, we set our sights and our feet to a life in the North. We packed our things, and in many cases, our entire communities, and we headed for what we hoped would be a better life. Notice again how Lawrence uses shape to communicate movement, the sheer number of Black people who participated in the Great Migration. Via documents, preserves, and promotes the contributions of the African American arts community. Thus, this content is made free of charge. To support our efforts, please visit buyblackart.com. Live with the art you love.